so you can see us. Yes. Look. Yep. <coughs> Very nice. Okay, yeah, and the light looks pretty good. Okay. Hi. <laughs> well, hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Knitting Duo vlog. Yes. It's a video vlog. Yes. It's not a podcast. Um, well, since, yes, well, they don't even know who we are yet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so since we're new, we should probably start with introductions. My name's Emily. I'm Jeannie. And um, my mom and I, um, Jeannie and myself, my mom, we are the knitters. Um, this is my dad, Marty. Hi, I came over for tea and he, show off my hat. He's actually <laughs> going to show off one of our finished objects. So um, before we get started, let's talk about what we're drinking. We all have a nice cup of tea. Mm, mm. Tea. And it's really good. Mm. Don't drink too much. It's a little hot. Um, and it's from the Tea Cozy in downtown Sacramento. Sacramento, California. It's called Zest for Life. Mm. And it's a nice herbal tea. Um, it's kind of piney, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's nice. It's zesty. Yeah. And we're also enjoying it with some delicious, freshly homemade lemon bunt cakes. From our lemon tree. Yeah, the lemons are from our lemon tree. And... I think you have a lemon fact you were going to share with us all. Oh, I am. Actually, they're Meyer lemons, and I didn't know this, but a Meyer lemon actually has um, a cross <laughs> with a mandarin and a lemon, and it was discovered in 1905 by Fred Meyer in Beijing, China. My goodness. And the first tree that he brought back <laughs> um, to the States uh, it was really great, but then it got a virus, so... We all actually now all of our lemons are from an improved Meyer lemon that can't get that virus. Oh, so how much yeah. time did you spend on Wikipedia going down that road? No, hole? it was easy. I was making lemon marmalade, <laughs> and the fact came up. That's <laughs> all. Yeah, and Meyer lemons. If anybody, if you don't know, they're thinner skin. They make wonderful um, marmalade, and you can mix them with blood oranges and make marmalade, and or like these little cakes. They're, it's just a wonderful flavor with those lemons. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good. And I have to say that once I get this video edited, which I've never done before, and I post it on YouTube, which I've also never done before, um, I'm going to figure out how to put the link to the recipe we used for the lemon bundt cake down below. Um, we used a Martha Stewart recipe that took six eggs, half a... No, it took a whole pound of butter, oh, that's what two and a half cups of sugar, <laughs> and a cup of sour cream. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a free recipe. It was great. It was so easy to put together, and it turned out delicious. I made it this morning, and it, it smelled fresh. so good in the house while they were baking and when I was juicing the lemons. Oh, yeah. So, um, because my dad has stuff to do, he's got, aka, a book to read, we're going to start with the finished object we made him, and it is on his head. So we live in Northern California, oh, let me put that down, where it is not that cold compared to the rest of the world. But it feels cold to us, because when it gets to be like, what, 42 in the right. morning? It's cold. It's cold, because we're not used to it. It's not like Minnesota frozen, you know, Midwest or whatever. It does get that. cold, just like Italy. We're a Mediterranean climate. But today is uh, Saturday, January 25th, 26, 26, 2019. And I think it's supposed to be 65 this I think weekend. So. So yeah, um, it's not like Norway. I'm sorry to all my Norwegian knitting friends where you haven't seen the sun in a while, at least if you're north. Yeah. But anyways, the hat. So this yeah. was a hat I made for my dad, which was actually kind of a surprise because I pretty much don't knit for anyone else but myself. I prefer to create things See, for myself to wear. It's reversible. <laughs> yeah. And it was just a skein. I picked it up at the yarn store, our local yarn store. Um, because it was an alpaca blend and it's super soft and I know alpaca is nice and warm. And it's all the rage with the kids to wear it like this, so it looks, makes me look like a young kid again. And I'm sorry, I can't remember what yarn I used, if you really like it. I believe it was a, a Cascade brand yarn and it was the alpaca natural blended one. So I believe it's an alpaca, mm -hmm. alpaca and merino wool. And I just used some sort of generic um, uh, cable pattern. It's just a regular old <coughs> bead. knit in the round. You know, you do the decreases at the top and then bind off and, and pull it shut. So, ah. yeah. So that's our first finished object. Mm. Um, kind of out of order because yes. um, I think my dad now is going to exit unless you want to stay for the entire podcast. Well, I think I'm going to exit because I'm a guest and I'm going to let them carry on with the blog. Okay. 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 We'll see you later. See you later. Thank you. Very nice meeting you people. <laughs> so long, honey. Hope to see you again. Okay. Okay. Now back to the the real podcast. 
So I would like to thank everyone, first of all, for taking your time to um, watch our video blog about knitting, yarn, tea, and baked goods, and lemons, apparently, yes. some lemon facts in there. Um, so just to get some business out of the way, if you like our channel, please hit the subscribe button and that way um, you'll get our updates. If you hit, click the little bell, every time we update with a new video, you will receive a notification and you'll know that if you have some free time and you want to sit down and knit, you can put it on and watch us talk about yarn yeah. and tea and, um, and baked knit. goods. Yes. Sometimes puppies. I really like puppies. I don't have a dog right now, but my mom has a dog, my dog brother, Alex. Um, we're at my house, so he's not here. He's very loud because he's a beagle, and he was rescued. You got him from NorCal Beagle Rescue, I think. Yeah. 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 So, you know, he, he, he's got a, a few little issues, but he's a really cute, sweet dog. But he's very loud. Beagles are hounds, and they're really loud dogs. At least he is. Yeah. But not all the time. He's no. really actually very good. He's not a, a barker all the time at all. No, just when there's food. He or really he, likes food. He gets food. happy to see you. He has yeah. to let you know. Yeah, food is, is really his thing. Yes, it is. He doesn't care about knitting. No. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, oh, also, one more thing. We have an Instagram. It's The Knitting Duo. So feel free to go over there and follow us. I'm going to try to be better about posting pictures. Um, I work full time. My mom's retired. Uh, so she's gonna take over maybe posting some pictures on Instagram oh, yeah. of our knitting progress. Oh, wow. Yes. So though I'm a slower knitter, much slower than her, so and I have more time, but I, it takes me a long time. Yeah. So I guess we should start today with our finished objects. So we've each finished a few things in the last. We're since we haven't done this before, we're gonna go over um, recently finished objects and then some not so recently, but within the past six months, probably. Yes. Okay. okay. So do you want to start? Sure. Do you need me to get them for you? They're over there. I'll get them. Okay. So anyway, my first big project, I I actually taught Emily to knit and purl cast on, and that was the extent of it, and I never really went anywhere with my knitting, and boy, she picked it up, and next thing I know, she's making sweaters and all these things. So um, she encouraged me, and my, my first big project that I made was oh, I'm so proud of this this beautiful sweater that's made with this gorgeous I think this was shelter no, no. it was um, I think uh, oh, I have it in my West book. Yorkshire spinners was it the croft yeah the croft that's what it was yeah um, anyway it's Here, a beautiful it wool yarn and honestly it's so warm I use it because I, I had a few difficulties with it but anyway this is it and um, I wore it when we went for a hike and it was raining and I had a, a rain jacket on that I didn't realize wasn't totally waterproof and I was totally dry with my sweater on and warm and then I thought oh I'm warm now I'm going to take off my sweater and when I did I realized the whole inside of my coat was drenched but my sweater was like totally dry and I was warm. And it's a worsted weight yarn and this was the flax which is a good sweater for a beginner. And it comes in a lot of sizes, which actually can be a little confusing when you're looking at the pattern. So it's a good idea if you print out a hard copy of it to highlight um, the sizes that you're the size that you're doing, so you know like how many stitches to pick up or bind off or increase. And oh, it's from Tin Can Knits as a pattern um, flax sweater. And the yarn I was wrong. It's the Croft Shetland Tweed. It's 100% wool and it's non superwash. So it was a little bit rough maybe oh but yeah you, but you blocked it and washed uh, it and, and it's, it's it's soft it is it's, it's really soft not itchy at all and um the colors are so pretty i have this little book emily gave me called my um knitting notes and it's from um line and um, magazine yeah which i is always like, say lane because in english it looks like, like lane, lane but i yeah. think it's lina and it's really a wonderful uh, magazine that they put out about knitting things and in it it has spaces so i wrote certain things and i did have some Difficulty with my sweater and, and um, I. Uh, oh, whoops, that's your swatch. Yeah, that's my swatch. Oh, look how cute. My swatch I made. The swatch. Yes, it's always good to swatch. And um, and it was great. So I, I had to, I broke my shoulder and so I had to finish it oh, up yeah. after I, I 
finish my shoulder, but I finished it in time for fall. It was quite the summer for yeah, my mom. Yeah, it was a busy summer. We'll leave that behind. Yeah, leave that behind. But anyway, I'm very proud of this and that she encouraged me so much. She did help me. And this sweater actually was knit from, um, um, there's a lot of stockinette as you can see. Mm -hmm. And um, did I knit this from the top down? Um, yeah, it was yeah, a top so down it was sweater. Top down sweater. So, and as you learn, you you learn more things. And I used to get pretty upset if I thought I made a mistake. And Emily just helped me fix them, and I just kept going. Yeah, it's so. a, it's nice to knit a top down sweater because it's really easy to try on while you're knitting it. Yeah. And you went and you picked up stitches around the armhole oh, and knitted arm. the arms down to the cuff. Yes, and I like that mm -hmm. picking up the stitches. And you, you did a really nice job. It looked nice, really nice. Uh, nice line and under the armpit you don't have any holes no that's pretty common yeah yeah so yeah that's no really but nice. I do say it's probably due to this yarn it's real sticky and really fun to knit with it's a beautiful yeah. sweater yeah so I'm gonna show you guys my sweater I recently finished a sweater right after Christmas and I've been living in it honestly so I knit this out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. It's also a worsted weight yarn. The color is Long John. So it's a beautiful red with kind of flecks of a brighter red yeah, and then really some black pretty. in it. And the pattern was Kenning, Kenning's Yoke and it was from Line A Magazine number four. This was a yoke sweater. It's knit from the bottom up. And then you, um, you split where the sleeves are and you put some stitches on hold, you knit up and do the rest of the yoke and then you go back and you pick up the, what did I have? To, yeah, I think I picked up the stitches and then knit down to the cuff of the sleeve. It's um, got a really nice kind of understated, I hope you can see it, I'm not sure. Yeah, the camera thing's new for us. So, yeah, um, but the yoke is really pretty. There's a design in it. It's a like a just a cross, a left and a right cross stitch yeah. pattern, which means um, that on specific intervals, you would take the right needle and you would knit into the back of the second stitch on the left needle and then knit into like the, the front of the first stitch and then pull them both off and it crosses the stitch to almost give you kind of a little cable pattern, but it's real understated. Yeah, and it fits really nice. Um, the pattern was Kenning's Yoke from Line A Magazine number four, I believe. I would highly recommend it. If you've knit one sweater before or you are an adventurous or pretty accomplished beginner, it would be a fine beginner sweater. Um, the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter yarn is really nice. It softens up. It's also 100% wool. It's a Tarhi breed, I believe. And it's non-superwash, so it can be a little bit scratchy for some people, but it's fine for me. I apparently have really thick skin. No, so you don't really. I washed it, and it I softened up really soft. nice when yeah. it washed. I could almost feel a little lanolin in it when I was knitting with it, which I really enjoyed. So that was my sweater. I finished that right, like, maybe two or three days after Christmas. <coughs> Do you have anything else you want to show? Well, finished object? Oh, we'll show our cows. Yeah. So we got this lovely Malabrigo yarn, um, bulky yarn, and uh, mine was stained glass, and we just did simple cows. So this was knit flat, and then it was seamed up the back, and it's just an infinity cow. And it was just, um, I did a rib, oh, really um, simple. Yeah, I did, I'll, I'll have to look up the pattern for this, but this was the chameleon yarn, and it's kind of a twisted cowl. And I must say, I love this because you can wear it long or you double it. It's so warm and soft. The, um, <coughs> the yarn is Malabrigo. The, uh, it's Caracol, and it's approximately 90 yards, 150 grams. They recommend a U.S. size 13 to 15 needle or a 9 to 15 millimeter. And my mom's color was Camel Long? Yes. Chameleon. I'm sorry. Chameleon. <laughs> it's chameleon, yes. We do know how to read. And this one was yes. stained glass. It was the same type of yarn. And it knits up really nice. It was a really quick knit. I think I did mine like in an hour or two on the weekend um, in between larger projects, yes. which was really nice. And I've been living in it. It's nice and warm for your neck. Um, I really like you can keep it under your coat. We get some windy days here, so it's nice because scarves sometimes will blow out of your coat and, and you're like, ugh, all and over we the place. Went to, we went to San Francisco and it was perfect. Mm -hmm. it was but this is nice because you can really kind of get it up yeah. around your neck to keep you warm. You yeah. can, and if you really get desperate, you can put it up over your it face. It was nice on the yeah, ferry. Yeah, it was really nice Yeah, on a ferry ride. Yeah, or in the movies if it's cold. If you mm -hmm. have this around your neck, it really yeah. helps. My husband actually used it in the movie theater. Yeah, he's, he may need he one now. He wants one now, so I'm going to have to make him one. 
<laughs> yeah. Do you have any other finished objects you want to show? No, I think that's it. That's it? Okay, I have one I want to show. So, not every finished object turns out fabulous and great. Oh, right. So this was a very expensive finished yeah. object. Beautiful. It's made out of Soft. shibui yarn, yarn, which is beautiful. It's like a cloud and incidentally, the yarn is called Silk Cloud. It's a mohair silk blend. Um, the color was caffeine and uh, the pattern was, I'll link below, it was a shibui pattern and it's one of their cocoon shrugs. And then you use one of their other yarns to pick up the stitches and do the sleeves and pick up stitches around the collar. Um, you knit a few rows, you pick up about 460 stitches and then you bind off. And it's beautiful. I will say just knitting with a straight up silk cloud, single uh, strand of that on like a size seven needle was very difficult. The yarn sticks to itself. Um, it is not forgiving. If you need to rip back, um, it sticks to itself. It's hard to rip back. If you try to pull up a drop stitch, it does not go back the way that wool does. You can tell where you did your correction. Uh, so yeah, at one point I actually knit about 18 inches because it's knit from the left side to the right side and then you seam it up to make the, the cocoon drug piece. Um, I knit about 17 inches in and needed to be about 36 across. And I made a mistake, I got so frustrated on a Sunday morning um, that I ripped it all out, I started over and I ended up throwing that piece away because I couldn't oh. get it to unravel, it would break because it's so sticky. Yeah. So the problem with this is, it's beautiful, I really love it. I didn't do a good job executing it. By the time I got to putting on the sleeves and um, the neck opening collar, I was just done. I wanted to start a new project. And I should say about myself, I don't have a large stash. If I have a lot of yarn sitting around to knit, I feel really stressed out. And I only knit on one, maybe two projects at a time. So this was it for me. And I wasn't letting myself start anything new until I finished, which meant that I needed to get it done because I was done with it. And I just didn't do a very good job. I wasn't paying attention when I did the sleeve. So this sleeve is smaller than the other sleeve. Um, and when I got to the end, I was like, oh shoot, I'm like six inches shorter than the other sleeve. So it's tighter than that one. There's also a hole in it where I dropped a stitch and I just didn't go back and like pull it up nicely. My increases are atrocious. I don't know if you can see how bad they are. Oh, it's... So what I'm gonna do with this, I'm letting it sit and time out. And later this year, I'm gonna cut the sleeves off and I'm gonna unbind off, knit a few more rows and then do the bind off correctly and put new sleeves back on it. But it's gonna sit in time out. Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's my all. spot, yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to show this because everyone always shows their beautiful finished objects. Yeah, as much as I love my red sweater and lived in it for the first two weeks after I knit it, I like equally dislike this, this object. And I spent a lot of money on the yarn, so I was really disappointed in both myself my impatience and my inability to like take the time. It was a really simple pattern. If I just would have taken the time to execute yes. it better, I would have ended up with something I loved. Yes. And a word of advice too, if you wanted something to wear with a Christmas outfit, <laughs> oh yeah, start it the year before. Well, it actually started in September. No, it started in October for something to yes. wear to a Thanksgiving party I was going to. Yes. And then I, that didn't work out. And so then I was like, well, I'm gonna wear it to the first Christmas party I have on December 7th. And that didn't work out. Right, it was a lot of stress. And then I just wanted to knit to my red ready. sweater, because that red sweater I had picked out as my yeah. Christmas sweater, and I wanted a Christmas sweater, yes. by golly. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that, you know, yeah. We'll be starting Christmas sweaters probably in Soon. June. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah. June. Mm -hmm. Yep, we will. Sweaters are my thing. I love sweaters. Yes. And I, I think I've converted I think I'm, you. I think I love sweaters too, actually. Yeah, I can't wait to make another one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to go into works in progress, things we are actively working on. Okay. And I know you've got one. I'm, I'm excited I to do. see this. My mom's been working on something. Oh, and I'm sorry I didn't get it finished. I'm so excited because honestly, when my mom knits and makes stuff, I'm more proud of what she makes than what I make. Aww. It makes me happier. I was so thrilled with your sweater and you haven't worn it to the yarn store yet. Not yet. I should say well, that it's been a bad year. probably 95% of everything you'll see here, we bought at our local yarn shop, which yes. is called Rumpelstiltskin Yarns. It's on R Street in Sacramento, California.
I wonder if that's why. Okay. Make sure you set it for another Let's time. talk about the cow. Okay. So we had some camera problems. We just filmed our whole episode, but it stopped filming after 20 minutes. We're so we're gonna redo it. That. Also, it looks like I may have a little bit of a low battery, so we're gonna keep oh, it going. Okay. So we're gonna go back and talk about your in progress, your right. work in progress, whips as they are known. And this is the furrow cowl. It's a Brooklyn tweed pattern by, I'm not sure who it's by, uh, but it's Brooklyn tweed textured cowl with cables. Yes, we which was the first you. time for me doing cables. And a lot of firsts in this. Yeah, a lot of firsts and some decreases in reading a pattern. Decreasing in pattern. Yeah, decreasing in pattern and up. also reading a chart. Um, because I didn't know you read the charts from right to left, not left to right. Because you're going in the round. Because so I'm in the round. Right to left. Yeah, which I, I didn't, I had a lot of trouble understanding a lot of these things. No, you didn't. But you anyway, did it's a, it, and it kind of decreases as it goes. And it had um, seed stitch pattern in it, um, which I had a little trouble with the pattern, but I just kept going. And also my cables, I changed the pattern a little bit. Um, because I was learning how to read it and actually I like the way it looks so I kept it mm -hmm. and um, it's it's almost finished which I'm excited it'll still be cold enough I'll be able to wear it I love this yarn because it is so um, well it's the purple but it's got reds and blues and some light lavender -y color in there and I think it's just beautiful and then once it's washed and blocked it'll be even prettier mm -hmm. and it knits up, it's so easy if you um, drop a stitch to be able to find it and fix it. It's Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, so it's a non-super wash wool, and it's not merino, it's a tarhi, yes. tarhi, I don't yes. know how to say the sheep breed. sheep breed. It's an American sheep, and they, I think, have a little bit of coarser wool than merinos, yeah. but it's nice and soft. And it's so pretty, though, just with the flecks of color all throughout soft it. Soft, and you haven't even washed it no, yet. No, I haven't yeah. even washed it yet. So yeah, so I'm really excited. I'm going to be finishing that up this uh, this weekend, I hope. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know you're almost done. You've yes. got like, what, one more row in the binder? Yes. Off? Yes, one more row in the binder. So I have a work in progress. Um, I'm working on a pair of socks with some special sock yarn I got in San Francisco. We went to San Francisco in December for a trip, kind of for the holidays. Right. And holiday trip, that. and it was wonderful. We stayed on Union Square and way up on the like 27th floor of a Westin hotel really so you could look down onto the ice rink it looked like I felt like I was looking down into the snow globe uh -huh. because it was so holiday and yeah festive and our goal there we took our knitting of course because we had to rest in the room so we could do our knitting and then we were going to Brightex the material store and then we wanted to go to a knitting store and we went out to some fabulous dinner and jazz and um, meals that was just so much fun yeah. and um, Cafe Claude yeah cafe the Claude. little French cafe with live jazz yeah. it was oh, really fun was, and the food was just fantastic mm -hmm. it was just such a fun yeah. fun time long weekend we took and then we went to the knitting store imagine it yes imagine it like imagine it but k-n-i-t yeah knit. and we we always like to try to see if we can get yarn that's got kind of a local flair to it or something different and the people working there were so nice and um, so Emily got this really spectacular I think they're working up beautiful um, sock yarn it's Anzula luxury fibers which is a yarn dyer that's local kind of to us Northern California in Chico and I'm part in my reach I'm gonna get the ball band so I can read it to you um, it is the Nebula Base. It's a fingering sock yarn. It's 84% superwash merino, 16% sparkling Stellina. I don't know if you can see it. We're new to the camera thing, obviously. We're having some <laughs> problems today. It's a little difficult. Um, but there's a little bit of silver Stellina sparkle in there. It's my first time knitting with a Stellina yarn, which is kind of nice. But it's so pretty. Uh, the color is Black Cherry. It has about 400 yards, 365 meters. And they recommend a US 1 to 4 to get 6 to 7 stitches per inch. I'm using a US size 2, I think. It, I know the millimeter on it because I had trouble buying my needles. I'm making a sock pattern that was from Lina Magazine number 4, kind of my theme lately. It's the Fragment Socks, and they take 2.25 uh, millimeter needles. I'm doing mine on. 
two circular needles because I like doing them that way. Uh, magic loop, I'm not good at it. It's a little fussy for me. And I like using double pointed, but uh, I feel like the circular needles are more portable. So this is what the socks look like when they're done. Hopefully they're really you can see pretty. that. They're really oh my pretty. gosh, they're beautiful. So this is really nice yarn to knit with. I don't always like a superwash merino because it can be a little squeaky since the yarn's been tr treated so you can wash it and it does something to the scale on the fiber and um, you know, everything's a trade-off. But uh, this is a really, really nice soft yarn, not too squeaky and you'll see I've uh, made the heel flap, the gusset, and I'm working on the foot on this one. Made the heel flap on this one and I'm gonna start doing the, uh, turn the heel and make the gusset. Just a really nice sock. Um, the pattern's super easy. If you've knit socks before and you want to try something new, I highly recommend it. Um, if you are have not knit socks but you're an experienced knitter, you'd have no problem with this pattern. Once again, line in magazine number four, and I just was thinking, oh, I should probably tell you who wrote the pattern and give them credit. Uh, Fragment, and I love these magazines. They're just beautiful books. It's like a Nordic or a Finnish magazine. They've got the most beautiful stuff in there. This is by Helen Stewart, and I highly recommend this pattern. Um, it's both charted and written out for those who like charts or those who don't. So that is my work in progress. And then my mom is going to talk about some yarn she oh, got on vacation. Right. Neither of us have big stashes because it kind of stresses me out. Um, uh, me too. I, I can't have too much. And I just think that, you know, you go to the store, you always find beautiful yarn. So you will find beautiful yarn when you actually need to buy it for a project. So I prefer to wait because then I'm always buying something and working with something I'm excited about. I do let myself have my next two or three projects lined up, but I never have more yarn than for two or three projects. And I never just buy yarn. I always buy yarn with a purpose. So my next two or three projects are always like a sweater I have picked out, a specific pair of socks, a hat or something. Not, um, not just random yarn that's gonna sit in my stash and I have to find a way to use it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably right. what I'd say. You know, I'm a sweater knitter, so it probably started out a necessity because buying a sweater quantity's worth of yarn can be really expensive, yes. and you just can't go willy nilly every time you go to the store buying, well, I'm gonna make you know, that. a couple hundred dollars worth of yarn for this sweater and that sweater and that sweater. That's true. You know, that's true. That's why I like the magazines so yeah. too, because you can look and dream over it, and you're not having to yeah. buy the yarn. So tell so, us about this trip. Where okay, did you go? Well, we went to Point Reyes. And you and Dad? Our, yeah, it was in October for our, um, well, it's our birthday month, and then it was our anniversary, 39 years. And we go to Point Reyes. That's where we went for our honeymoon. So we thought, oh, we'll go back. So we were we were driving, and we went to the little town of Point Reyes. And I, now that I'm knitting, I like to go and um, find a yarn store. So they have one, and it was called um, the Black Mountain Artesians on Highway 1. I don't know if you can see that. And this is really kind of a funny story because I was going in there because I wanted to buy Emily some yarn because she was babysitting the dog for us while we were gone. My dog brother and Alex. And he at the time was used to getting up at like at 4.30 in the morning. He's a tyrant so, who yes. rules with an iron she, paw. She had her work cut out for her to... A little to shark in the morning to wake, wake me up around, around the bed. Oh my yes. god. So I went in the oh, store and the lady was really nice but she wasn't a real big knitter and the problem was I left my glasses in the car, so I couldn't really see the labels really well. So I bought this yarn for Emily, and um, when I got home, I guess my glasses still weren't working well, because I looked at it and I realized, oh, the label is, it says feline fibers, cat hair. It says guaranteed cat hair. Guaranteed um, cat hair blended. And I'm like, That's oh really my funny. god. Cat hair, <laughs> and I was just so upset because I thought it was really pretty. It's purple and got some pink and everything in it, and so. So you thought it was cat hair. I right? did think it was, so I said I can't give her this. I'm, I was thinking, how can I get rid of this, um, and whatever. And then we were filming, but it didn't film it, and we looked at the label, and I looked at the label for the first and time. I I'd never was, seen it. I was still having trouble reading it, and Emily looks at the the label, and it says. Wool mohair. It is not cat hair yarn. It's beautiful wool mohair. So I'm giving it to her. It looks like a hand spun two ply. It, yeah. it looks really, really pretty. 
um, and it's feline fibers and I think that she says guaranteed cat hair blended because it's probably a woman who has cats maybe a man it's someone who has cats um, and makes yarn because when you have pets yeah. their hair gets everywhere. everywhere we had a gold she had a golden retriever that oh it's a lady oh, Ann yeah. Brazina from in Fort Bragg, Bragg. Bonner's yeah. Ferry Idaho Idaho oh she must split her time so she must split her time with the animals so I, I I'll have to uh, look and see if I can find a website for her yes. and link that below because so it's really beautiful. I am giving this to her now that well, I realize you. it's not spun cat hair. It's nice but, and soft. <laughs> it was quite a shock to me today to find out because I thought, oh, and it wasn't real cheap. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Would you like, I can make you something out of it. Oh, Maybe yeah. a cow and make a really nice yeah, cow. Make, yeah, whatever. We'll see. Yeah, Probably we'll not see. for dad, not no. his colors so much. That'll work up. But it is really pretty. He does kind of like these colors. So yes, I was trying to give it away and then I realized it's not really clear. <laughs> so, That's hysterical. That was, that was yeah. really funny. Yes. Okay, I'm yeah. going to check the camera. So next we're going to do book reviews. <laughs> We've started this part like four times. The phone rang. It's been great. My phone never rings. And who has a house phone in this day and age? Why do we have a house phone? Oh, we, we never do. use it. We don't either. Um, anyways, okay. So this book is beautiful. The Faroe Island Knits or Faroe Island. I'm not sure how to say it. Um, over 50 traditional motifs and 25 projects from the North Atlantic. It's by Svanhild Strom and Marjun Biskopsto. And I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. We love your book. Um, I'm going to link it below for anyone who's interested. Uh, this book was originally published in 2016, and it was translated into English in 2018. Um, it was originally published in Norwegian, so if you happen to speak Norwegian or read Norwegian, um, you can get the original book. Uh, but it's got beautiful pictures. It, beautiful. it starts out with a little bit of a history of the Faroe Islands. They are an island chain that are midway between Scotland and Iceland in the North Atlantic, for those who don't know. And I believe they're part of the Royal Kingdom of Denmark, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but they're beautiful. And they have a really strong, you know, their very own knitting tradition, like a lot of those island chains do. It has some basic knitting tips, but it's not a... A book that's going to teach you how to knit. Um, it's more of a pattern book. It has a little bit about the history and then it goes into traditional um, sweaters and garments, both motifs. Um, there are patterns in here for men and women. It's definitely a book for persons who can read charts. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is color work. There's a lot of color work, really bold color work, and then some more subdued. I love, I love this. That. I do too. I think maybe we should make that. I do too. Um, you could make that for me. <laughs> <laughs> I could make that for you. I would love that. Um, a lot of the patterns take really woolly wool, so not super wash, which is you know kind of the way it goes with color work. It helps your stitches knit together, kind of, and uh, limits the puckering. Um, you definitely need to know how to read charts or be comfortable with charts for this book. Uh, but there are, they're totally doable patterns. They're just beautiful. I love this sweater. Be really pretty in red too. Yes. The Anna Maria. But really what sold me on this book was they have this thing called the Scully Star? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's the knitted house, house slipper. slipper. My feet are freezing all the time, so I'm going to make a pair of these. They're soft shoe liners that double as slippers, knitted here in a blend of wool and silk mohair. There is a long-standing tradition of knitted Scully Star in the Pharaohs made from Pharaoh's sea wool and worn inside wooden clogs or rubber shoes. Nowadays, they're used as house slippers. And they're just beautiful. I love the color work. They look so toasty. It'd be a good way to start. Mm -hmm. too, I think. And they look pretty simple. Yeah. I looked through the pattern, which I cannot show you, because um, I don't want to give away too much. But I highly recommend it. There are sweaters, too, um, that are a little bit more uh, for everyday wear. Like, uh, if you have an office job, there are a few cardigans in here that would be great to wear to an office job. Or just around if you're running errands. That's so nice. That's really cute. Yeah. The stuff, uh, the items in here are knit in the round and steeked. It looks like, for the most part, the few patterns that I kind of looked through. So I haven't knit anything from here, but um, I'm hoping to soon. Uh, this is definitely on my dream knitting list for the year is to make something out of here. I want to do a lot more color work this year, and I've been working on making myself oh. knit different ways, um, continental, and then also flicking. I'm a thrower, an English thrower. 
if anyone's interested. I've done a lot of research on knitting styles lately because I've been trying to uh, get more comfortable holding my yarn on my left hand and flicking with my right hand so that I can do two or three color color work mm -hmm. pretty comfortably yeah, without knitting, <laughs> without <laughs> mixing up my my uh, my yarn. So I'm gonna make sure the camera's still filming since I'm paranoid now. Still filming. Okay. So one more book. One more book. This is a beautiful book. It was a Christmas present from my mom oh, yeah. to me. And it is The Vintage Shetland Project by Susan Crawford. If you have not heard of this book, I highly recommend you go and check out her website. Yes. It is SusanCrawfordVintage.com. And um, this is a beautiful book. She did so much work on the tradition of Shetland knitting and, and preserving the, the history, history and the patterns. It's fabulous. And it's, there are several chapters in the front where she talks about knitting styles and how it evolved in the Shetland Islands and persons who were really critical in um, preserving the Shetland knitting tradition. And then it also functions as a pattern book and there's a whole gallery um, where she's redone the, the historical patterns for the modern day and there are some beautiful uh, Shetland patterns and projects for you to try out. And I know from visiting her website that she has lines of yarn that are specifically plied and spun for these projects to help you get gauge and also in some historical colors. Um, do you have anything to yeah, add on? No, uh, that's, that's about it. It's just that they, it's just such a fantastic history and that, you know, back in the day people actually, they had to knit because they needed those articles of clothing and then it became an industry for them and um, it's just fantastic that she's tried to, she's captured all of this. And a lot of the colors and things are based on the nature that's around them. And um, I actually can't wait to read this book of the historical part. And I'm looking for, you have a favorite pattern in here. You oh, want to make a little cardigan, so I'm looking for that. They, they do mm -hmm. have some really, this one. This one. This little, if you're a gardener or you love flowers, I just think that's the sweetest little. Okay, we can start. Okay. I want to sit right here. Well, hello again. We took a quick break for lunch um, because we had more camera problems. Huh. <laughs> the battery died. But we heard it this time, so there's going to be a lot of editing. Hopefully, I'll get it all done tomorrow so we'll be able to, to have a product to, be yeah, to put out there. Yes. Um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Um, so we got back from lunch, and we have three more segments we want to do. We talked about our brioche. Did we talk about yeah, our brioche? Yeah, we did. Okay. Um, we talked about our finished objects, our works in progress, our tea, our, our, books. our lemon bunk cake, our books. So the next thing we have to talk about um, is the Knitting Guild Association, TKGA. And I'm going to put a link down below. Um, and also, if I do notes on our Instagram account, I'll put it there. But basically, the Knitting Guild Association is a nonprofit. I think it was $25 to become a member for so, a year. Yeah. And it's a really great resource. They have a lot of uh, newsletters with patterns and technique, uh, little tutorials, Magazine. magazines. And they also do, um, as part of being a TKG8 member, you can do classes, correspondence classes. And that's where my mom comes in, so I'll yeah. let you take it away. So I, I signed up because Emily did, and then I signed up for the basics, basics, basics class, and actually Emily did too. And I'm really excited because you only have to know how to cast on, knit and purl, and then you could take these classes, and it's very organized. Emily made me this great project bag right here and um, it's so cute. It's also fully lined. And what I love is it holds my Knitting Guild folder with all the instructions for the first chapter, the first class that I'm doing. So this folder fits in there. I keep everything so I have it. And I'm only just started, so I've only blocked off and done first the testing swatch where you do three different size needles and then the first swatch and they were working on decreases. So it turned um, out really nice. Yeah, so and very, it blocked out really it nice. Did. It did. Well, Got those blocking deal. boards and pins really help. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm doing and, and anybody can join 
and um, I'm just excited to get started on it. I, I, I'll have to go on now. We're going to do, I think, lifted increases on my next um, round that I do. So, yeah, it's, it's something I would recommend highly. And yeah. there's no time limit. It's not like class where you have to get your assignment in by the end of the week or whatever. It's your own time frame, whatever you can do. And the woman who runs the Basics, Basics, Basics class, um, they have a Ravelry group, so you can join that. Okay. Though, honestly, I'm not very active on Ravelry. Her name's Arenda Holiday. She also has a blog that I believe is arendaholiday.com. It's holiday, H-O-L-L-A-D-A-Y. Yeah. And then she goes over techniques, um, both tutorials, and then she links to YouTube videos um, showing how to walk through different techniques. So I'll try to remember to link to that because if yeah. you're struggling with something and you're knitting, there are a lot of good resources out there you can look up and read, even if you can't afford to go out and buy a big, heavy you know, book with every technique in right. it. There are a lot of free resources out there on the internet that you can access. And if you do have $25, the TKGA uh, group looks like it's also a very good resource. I've been enjoying it it's reading the back issues of the yeah. Cast On magazine. And it's really organized, easy mm -hmm. to find. Because I get overwhelmed since yeah. I'm a new knitter a lot of times with so much information. It's nice how it is. And the classes are an additional cost other than your membership. So yeah. I want to be transparent with oh, that. Yeah, so. yeah. But still, yeah. yeah it's good. Yeah, anyways, we're having fun with it. It's something we're doing together. And I should be working on my swatches. But honestly, I, I just have been working on my socks because I want a new pair of socks <laughs> to wear. <laughs> so, okay. We're going to talk about a knitting technique. I was reading something or watching another YouTube video and a knitter was talking about how she loves the long tail cast on. I think pretty much everyone starts or it's one of the first cast ons they learned the long tail cast on. And it's the one where you'd use one ball of yarn and you put the tail of the yarn over your thumb, I think. Let me think about that. Um, and you put the working yarn over your um, pointer finger, I believe. Right. And then you weave the needle in and out and you pick up stitches and it gives you kind of a very nice structured edge with a little bit of give and it's got a nice look to it. It's very polished looking and it's pretty simple compared to some of the other cast-ons that are out there, which is why I think a lot of people start with it. So I want to say if you've got like 400 stitches to cast on or 300 or even 50 and you measure it out sometimes you are a little short and you have to start all over which is just terrible and other times you measure way too much and you've got this long tail and it feels like a huge waste well there is a solution to this uh what you can do is you can either use two balls of yarn you'll see here i have a pink and a blue strand or you can take your skein of yarn and you can divide it up into two balls and you hold them together just like this on the top of your needle, just like this. I hope you guys can see this. Um, I do not do a slip knot. I never do a slip knot, even with a regular long tail, because I don't like having the knot in my knitting. I feel like it causes extra friction on the yarn, and it's a place of weakness where you might possibly get breakage in the future. And also, I feel like it gives me a little bump there, which kind of is, I find irritating. So you can just hold the yarn on top of the needle like this, and you set yourself up, like you would for a long tail with one strand over your thumb, one strand over your pointer finger. Pick up the stitches using that yarn just like you would for a regular long tail. You'll see I'm going, picking up, making the stitch, picking up, making the stitch. I have um, one strand of yarn that comes around my thumb with the end going around the outside of my thumb. One strand of yarn um, going around my pointer finger with the end going down around my pointer finger and I'm holding both strands with my three fingers in my hand, picking up, picking up, going through the loop, pulling tight, picking up, picking up, going through the loop, making a stitch. And you can do that with either two colors like I've done here to demonstrate if you want a decorative edge or you can do it with one color and that way you can have as many stitches cast on without running out of yarn as you need and you don't have to try to measure or guess or whatever so when you get to the end you just would snip one of the yarns and i'm actually and you've got two you would just snip the one that you don't want to be your working yarn you would work from the other one and then you'd weave in the end so you have a few extra ends to weave in 
but it makes for a really nice cast on um, edge and you don't have to worry about losing your yarn. And I can refill that later if I need to. Okay, I think you will. I probably will. <laughs> We're tired. We've done this several times yeah, now because we yeah. keep on having technical issues. Here, right. I'm going to put this here. Is that my needs? But basically the idea is you can use two sources of yarn when you do the long tail cast on so you don't have to try to awkwardly measure how much yarn you need right. for the tail end of the cast and I have on. to say I've tried everything with the measuring including where it says so if you wrap it around your needle mm -hmm. then you'll come out right with what you need but it's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not true at all. Do you want to demonstrate now? Well I'm going to try it because I've never okay. done this yet. Okay so hold your needle in your right hand. Yeah. Here my mom's going to do it the right way. So she has the yarn that's attached to the ball, the working yarn. Um, feeding into her long tail cast on and she's going to put the ends of the yarn no put them on top of your needle oh, first yeah. start always by putting the stop okay drop okay you want to put the end of your yarn right over your this. needle and you'll notice this is the end that's not attached to the ball that's what i did wrong previously set up like you're going to do a long tail cast on with this and this mm -hmm. like this uh -huh. like you have you're very far away though i would for me, I have to be closer so yeah. I can, okay? Okay. And then you pick up the thumb, not that one, the outer one. This one? No, oh, you did it the wrong way. Stop. Okay, go. No, stop. You want to pick it up from under. Right. Go through there. Right. Over. And then through and the through. loop. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You got that? Oh, yeah, you guys. Yeah, it's a regular long tail. It seems a little awkward the first time, but then you, you've you got it. Yeah. So tell them through your steps how you're okay, doing so it. Okay, so I'm going under, picking up on my thumb, uh -huh. and then over and making the stitch. Through the loop. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just a little slow, but. No, you know, you're yeah, you have to get good at this, uh -huh. and it makes a nice edge. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to do this from now on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you never have to worry. You do have another end to weave in. That's okay. Too. But, um, but that's all I right. think it's way worth it. It is. There. Yeah. See, and then you decide which one you yeah. want to cut um, and have. And it doesn't unravel itself. Mm -mm. No. No. Oh, great. It can sometimes unravel a little bit. You have it's to be a little cute. careful if you're yeah. joining to work in the round without yeah. the slip knot. But um, yeah, I haven't had a problem. You know, great. Oh, you could make that. a slip knot and then do the same thing if that's what you prefer. I just prefer not to. Yeah. So two hints. How to cast on long tail and not run out of yarn and how to get rid of the slip knot, yeah. which I feel like changes the tension of that it one does. area. So Well, and I, in our brioche class, actually, she had us get rid of the slip knot. Remember? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. She was also not a slip knot no, fan, I think. So, so. anyway. All right. <laughs> Okay, fun. well now we've gotten to the very fun end yeah, of the part. video blog or yes. vlog. Um, thank you for spending your time with us today. We really appreciate uh, you doing that yes. and it's giving us an outlet to talk about some yarn and some knitting. It's been fun. It has been fun. Our first podcast, yes. we had some technical issues that made it, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we missed out on some of the really funny parts oh. because the camera did malfunction. Having to do with the cat yarn. But yes. My mom realized that the yarn was not cat hair yarn, that it was wool mohair. And I couldn't believe it. Cause, and I'd never seen the label because I was like, oh, cat hair yarn? I don't need yeah, that. I'm sorry. I, I saw I have to give it away. I'm going to make you a cowl now, I think. I'll yeah. make you something out of I it. I couldn't read that. I don't know. It's very faint. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about the giveaway. Yay. Yay! So we would like to, as a thank you for watching our um, our vlog, give you yarn um, and some other goodies. Oh, yeah. So to enter the giveaway, we are going to need you to subscribe to the channel. Um, the giveaway is only for subscribers. And leave a comment. And for the comment, I think I'd like it if you could leave a comment about... Um, if you knit, if you crochet, what you like to knit, what you like to crochet. If you don't do either, what's your craft of choice? What do you do um, to be creative? Uh, and you know, just a little comment about that. So if you are a subscriber and you leave a comment, you are eligible to win our giveaway. We will ship to anywhere in the world that has mail service. So if you don't have mail service, I'm not sure how to get it to you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, carrier pigeon? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so anyway, so let's get into it. What are we giving away? 
Well, first off, because we love our local yarn store, Rumpel Stiltskin Yarns, we're giving away this fabulous canvas bag. It's really large. You could use it for groceries. Um, it's definitely big enough to fit a sweater project or a, or a blanket or a couple of sweaters. And it's made in the United States. Made in the U.S. It's a really sturdy bag and it's got their cute little logo on it. Um, and it's nice. You know, a lot of places are phasing out the use of disposable bags when you shop. So it's always nice to have these folded up and Ready you could put your, your enamel pins on it. Yes. Okay, so that's just the first thing we're giving away. The second thing is, and I'll talk about this and then I'll let you talk about your favorite okay. thing. Um, the tea we had today. Oh, it smells so good. You can smell that, right? Oh, yeah. Um, we have the Loose Leaf Zest for Life tea that we were drinking today. This is an herbal, non-caffeinated tea. Oh, it smells so good. It's kind of piney. It's a sweeter tea. I didn't think it needed any sweetener to it. And then I also, since it's loose leaf, have a tea and herb ball. So you fill this with about a teaspoon of tea, pour boiling water over it, and then let it sit for five minutes and your tea is ready. This came from the Tea Cozy, which is actually next door to our favorite yarn store, Rumpelstiltskin. Um, they're both on R Street in Sacramento, California, if you happen to come visit. They're both on... Uh, Instagram, and I think they both have websites. Yeah. Yes, t-cozy.net is the tea cozy, and I'll link these down below also. So this is part of the giveaway. This is the first gift, some lovely tea and a little tea uh, ball so you can brew some loose leaf tea for yourself and enjoy it while you're knitting. And then the second thing, do you want to talk about? Yeah, this is one of my favorite things. Um, it's a knitting roll counter uh, by Coco Knits. And um, it's my favorite because the little round counters I have trouble with. Sometimes as they get older, they get too loose and they move off the row so you can't tell where you are. And this one's so easy. It's also got metal if you want to stick it on a magnetic bracelet if you have one, if you like that. And um, anyway, you just, you see it's you locked and it won't move. You just open it, click click and then oh I have to go it's locked and you won't lose your place ever so yeah it's a favorite favorite of mine I actually wish I could be in the giveaway because I'll buy you one yeah. <laughs> yeah this is a lovely little stitch marker yeah they're, they're um, counter they're, um, they're oh, the yeah. best yeah sorry about the yeah. crinkly paper there yeah, wrap that back really up for good. you really good and then the next thing that we have for the giveaway is something we got online oh. on etsy.com handmade with love oh this is really these are super cute and they came from uh, anita wentz at walnut farm designs she is an etsy shop walnut farm designs and also a facebook and a website it's all walnut farm designs i don't know if you can see that but i will link below in case you can't these are so cute. Oh, these oh, are so cute. Since I, I would want to keep this. Since we're kind of tea drinkers and we started off our vlog today with some lovely tea, um, we got these beautiful, sweet little stitch markers. And they are so cool. Progress keepers. I hope you can see them. It's a miniature teapot and tea kettle with the little flowers on yeah, it. Yeah, so cute. And they have these great hooks that actually you can open and move if you need to or like if you crochet they move their their stitch counters around then you can take it off and put it wherever you want it yeah so yeah really cute Super so they're cute. good progress keeper stitch markers for both knitters and crocheters yeah in case anyone out there happens to be a crocheter which i want to learn how to do yeah. but it looks so complicated and I've tried a few times, but I just feel so awkward with the crochet hook. Yeah, I just I really can't get the the technique yeah, down. It's good for making embellishments. Though, One day flowers and, and three dimensional things. Yeah. There's a lot of you can do really great texture yeah. with crochet. Yeah, I have to get the knitting down first. I also really like some of the way that the variegated yarn works up in crochet because oh, it's yeah. a little bit more mixed up than knitting. I think it looks really cool a lot of the times. Yeah. So and oh. now to the yarn. Oh, I'll yeah. let you hold this one. Okay. So we have a skein of sock yarn and a mini. I'm going to talk about the mini first. The mini, I hope you can see that. It's really pretty. It is a very bright purple with some pink undertones. It is from Hedgehog Fibers. It's a sock mini, 20 grams, 
80 meters, 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. It's machine washable, though I've used this yarn and I have never um, washed it in the machine. I hand wash all my hand knits. We haven't had problems with the bleeding color. <laughs> yeah, that. the color is called Spell, which I really love. And it's made in Ireland and it's a beautiful color and it is to go with this beautiful skein of sock yarn. Do you want to yes. talk about it? Oh, or, no, go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is actually a local dyer. The dyer um, lives in the same area in Northern California as us. She's in the area. And this is a beautiful sock yarn with lots of colors in it. I hope you can see there's purple, greens, pinks, pinks. corals, some gold. Yeah. It's, it's really just beautiful. beautiful and it goes so nice with this purple. So you could have a cuff and a mm -hmm. heel or whatever. A little contrast. Yeah. You could put it with something else to make a wrap or a shawl. So this is from Invictus Yarns. It's called uh, Master of My Feet. The colorway is Groovin. It's a 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards, 100 gram sock yarn. Machiner hand wash cool lay flat to dry and she has a shop invictusyarns.etsy.com or he I'm, I'm not sure who the dyer is but invictusyarns.etsy.com invictus yarns and i want to just say we bought all this none of this was given to us it just was pretty and we thought it'd be fun to give it away i also really like if you're familiar with the poem invictus yeah. um, i'll link that below it's a lovely poem and i think it's a little uh, play on that because that poem talks about being the master of your own fate so master of my feet. It's very, cute. Um, it's very, very cute. So we are going to give this away. You are eligible for all of this. It's going to be a one giveaway, one personal win it all. Win it. And right now we have no subscribers. So if you subscribe and you're the only one to subscribe and, win. and leave a comment, you'll win. <laughs> and you have a really good chance of winning at this point. So to win um, all these prizes, the tea, the stitch markers, the row counter, and the <laughs> okay, so it cut us off again. Apparently we've got a 20 minute limit and we are chatty. So we're just going to reiterate, to win the grand prize of everything in this nice tote, the tea, the stitch markers, um, the yarn, the row counter, you just need to subscribe to our channel and leave a comment. And then when we post our next video, which we're going to try to do sometime in February, mid-month, uh, we will announce the winner. We're going to use the random generator that everyone uses to pick a winner. Yay! Yay. Yeah. So um, we have no subscribers right now, so you've got a really great chance of winning. Great chance of winning. So subscribe <laughs> to our channel. <laughs> Leave a comment. Tell us what you like to do to be creative. Do you knit? Do you crochet? Do you embroider? Do you paint? Um, we just want to hear about what you do in your free time. So, um, so thank have, you. Oh, yeah. no, you go. No, I was going to say, we have a lot of fun doing this. And yeah. we just like to see if other people are having fun too. Um, I didn't used to have fun knitting because my mistakes used to really bother me. And, <laughs> and uh, don't let them get you down. She's called me in fun. tears before. Yes, I'm ripping stuff out that I shouldn't because she actually could fix it. <laughs> and now I'm learning how to fix it too. It's not mm -hmm. so bad. Yeah. So, yeah, don't give up. Well, thank you for spending your time with us um, from the knitting duo to you. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoy a nice cup of tea or coffee or whatever you like, maybe some wine, and uh, sit down and get some time to knit or do whatever you like to do yeah. to be creative. Yes, and did we, just, did we say our motto? What's our motto? Our motto is, the more we knit, the better, the better we, we get. get. There you go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.